Hi, this is Dennis Gage. Welcome to another edition of My Classic Car. If Mopar performance muscle gets you revved up, then you're going to love this episode because we're guests of the Mopar Nationals here in Columbus, Ohio. This world famous event includes a car show, drag racing, and swap meet, among other things. The host facility is the National Trail Raceway, so you'll undoubtedly hear the sweet sound of drag racing throughout the show. Joining me now is Mr. Jim Belinda, president of the Mopar Nationals. Nice to meet you, Dennis. Jim, you got some serious muscle here. Definitely. Over 3,000 cars are registered this year. Yow. Now, you've been doing this for a few years. It's our 18th annual event. And it has moved around a bit? Yep. We started out in Michigan at the Chrysler Proving Grounds. Uh, we kind of outgrew that facility and we moved to uh, Indiana. We were there for a number of years, came to Columbus in 86, stayed here seven years, went back to Indiana at uh, IRP. And uh, we're there for five years, and we're our first year back in Columbus, Ohio, with the new uh, renovated facility. Yeah, you can't pass that up. That's just uh, listen to those babies. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what what's the criteria for showing a car here? Are there basically, limits? Yes. Uh, basically, it's got to be a Chrysler product. I like that figure. Yeah. Uh, we are allowing American <laughs> Motors now into the family. Um, we're having a cutoff date of 1975. Uh, we're not restricting cars as far as performance models, limited editions, and things like that. We will allow those Vipers, Prowlers, uh, some of the late model unique cars. But it's, we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of 1973 model year, and we have special anniversary display area for those cars, and we're also celebrating the 30th anniversary of 1968. Now, we're standing in a, a concourse show field here, judging field, is that yes, right? Yes, this side of the track, we've got our judge show entries. Uh, these are the guys that are professionally judged. Um, and the individual classes, A body, B body, C body, whatever body style Chrysler had. And then we also have our what we call our unrestored factory stock, cars that are all original. And then our OE certification, which is cars that basically ground up restoration. And instead of ju you know being judged against uh, other cars, they're judged against a set of standards that we put together for Mopar Nationals. Well, Jim, I can't wait to get around and see a few more of these cars, but I really want to go over and see what's going on at the track. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Great having you out here, Dennis. As I mentioned at the top of the show, the Mopar Nationals is part car show, part drag racing. And the action is almost non-stop during the event. You'll see classic and new Mopar vehicles taking to the track and letting it all hang out. The car show portion features thousands of original and modified Mopar cars and trucks and what Mopar Nationals would be complete without a world-class swap meet and vendor area. When you're taping a television show, it's hard to see everything, but I still manage to catch up with a few proud Mopar owners. I'm here with Lee and Lee Jr. with their 64 Barracuda that I guess was a father and son project. Is that right, guys? That's yeah, that's correct. correct. Now, I understand you supplied the credit card and you basically engineered and built it. That's yeah. correct. Well, this thing, guys, is beautiful. It was pretty stock appearing from the outside, 64 Barracuda, but that's the that's where it stops. I mean, even the interior is, it's beautiful. Well, that's what we wanted. We wanted a kind of car that looked basically stock on the outside, but we really wanted to make an impression when people come up and looked into the car. Well, I see she's even tubbed. Yeah, we tubbed it because we put a Dana 36 independent rear, end, rear suspension in it. We wanted to go a little bit different in the back end of the car, too. Well, it must, if it's that serious in the back, it must be pretty serious up front. Yeah, well, it is, and we wanted to make a good impression under the hood, too. We, we really wanted to shock the public when we raised the hood. I think that's part of, of what we've done here. Wow. Well, that's a shock. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what are we looking at? So we're looking at a twin turbocharged 360. Uh, now, is that a crate Jarrett, motor? No, yes, sir. That is a crate motor. It's a 360 horse crate motor that we put the twin Jarrett turbochargers on. Now, what kind of horsepower are you pumping out in this? Well, we're kind of estimating five and a quarter. Wow. Well, Gary, a 70 AA Arcuda. Correct. This thing is really cool. Thank you. It's pretty rare, pretty sought after, yeah. isn't it? It was built one year by Chrysler uh, in order for them to go Trans Am racing in 1970 only. So it was this and the uh, Challenger TA both, Challenger right? TA is a sister car to the AAR. Now, what does AAR stand for? That was Dan Gurney's uh, racing team, All-American Racers. All-American Racers. Mm -hmm. Now, these things had, had some special options. This hood was a special. Fiberglass right? hood was on this, uh, this year only for this car. The engine is a 346 barrel 346 engine. 346 barrel. Which they only put in the, in the 70 Cudas. Well, uh, I think we should have a look at it. Sure. Let's take a look. Oh man, that's beautiful. Thank you. 
Now, did you, uh, did you restore this? Yeah, I did all the work on it myself uh, with the exception of the transmission rebuild. It's kind of a rare, uh, low option car, uh, column shift, automatic. Uh, it has the road lamps on it, uh, 391 gear, and a quick ratio steering. And you've got, actually, you've got buckets and a column shift. Buckets with a column shift, no console. That is odd. Dave, the Dragon Wagon. Now this is a piece of race history. Thank you. What all are we looking at here? I mean, well, this, is this actually the original Dragon Wagon? No, the original car, Dennis, was a 1963 Dodge that I raced over 30 years ago. Um, because today I'm a Chrysler Plymouth dealer in Evansville, Indiana. You can't be racing a Dodge. Not very well, right? <laughs> so we built a clone of the original car, and it's a 64 Plymouth. We tried doing, doing the car to restore it back to originality the best we could with the same painting and did a full restoration like you would on any antique automobile. Basically the engine is a, an update of parts that have been available for years but are today's technology if you will. Wow. Indy cylinder head builds the engine for the end for the car. It has aluminum cylinder head. It's referred to as a 57213 because they actually relocate the combustion chamber in the cylinder head. It has a Chrysler Siamese bore block, and it's been bored out to four and a half inches bore with a four and a half inch stroke. It's a special block with cross bolt main, very durable, very strong. The intake manifold is new this year from Indy, and it produced enough power that the first time we tested it picked the car up three and a half tenths wow. and seven mile an hour. Wow. Now, this is pumping out what sort of horses? In excess of 900 in at excess this point. excess of 900. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Our feature this week is about a car that's as at home in the water as it is on land. Hey, what is that? It's an Amphi car. Today we're in East Grand Rapids, Michigan at Reeds Lake with Bob Gruders in one of the more bizarre little cars we've ever had on this show. Bob, this is your 60, I can't stop laughing. This is your 67 Amphicar, is that right? That's right. Dennis, welcome to Grand Rapids, of course. Um, this car is a kick. I, I gotta tell you, they are, they just make me laugh every time I've seen them. Now you've had this car for how long, Bob? We've had this for about three years, restored for about one year. But you've always kind of wanted one of these? Oh and... yeah, it was, you know, you see, everybody's seen these cars in the past, but haven't seen one lately, and so, you know, people recognize the car. Oh yeah, it's yeah. distinctive. I remember it from my youth. Now, how, <laughs> what kind of shape was it in when you found it? Actually pretty good. Was yeah. it roadworthy? Was it seaworthy? Well, it, it did need some tender love and care, but it only had 2,000 miles on it, of course, and it was dented up from being tied up to a dock, but overall pretty good, pretty good. And this is a car they always said was as comfortable at sea as it was on land. <laughs> I don't know well, how good it was at either one, actually, but, yeah. <laughs> but it did them both. It really, it really rides along pretty exactly. nicely on the road. Mm -hmm. and, well, now and they're the rear engine cars. So what's up front? What's under the, <laughs> the deck here? Well, this is the key, of course, to the car, and you really just loosen it up right here and lift it up, and what we have underneath is a trunk and a gas tank. And the gas tank was um, kind of something that happened to us on the lake. We're driving down the lake or well, driving was, down the lake. Sw <laughs> swimming down the lake, maybe, whatever you call it. But it, we heard some sloshing there. They, uh oh, we're in trouble. Heart starts bump, um, pounding. And I hear the sloshing going back and forth, only to find out, fortunately, it was the gas tank, you which is right there. We weren't taking on water, so we were okay. Yeah, well, that's good, because I, I hear when these do th sink, they sink like a stone. <laughs> 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 but it's got all the, the Coast Guard goodies, right? I mean, yes, you got it does. Your, all your lights and everything. This is actually the horn. Yep. And of course, you got your red light, green light right here. And it has a little running light that's on the back of the car. Well, now what's the interior of an Amphicar, of a 67 Amphicar? Well, this is the original interior, which we're very fortunate. Um, and it's a vinyl leather type, which Waterproof. is... Waterproof. Yep. And the dash instruments are original. And it has a four-speed transmission in it. And what's the little lever on the floor? The little lever is really your shifting device. Forward, pushing it forward, uh, puts it engaged the props to go forward and pull it back. It's reverse. It's quite simple. <laughs> I read that there weren't many options on these cars. You can get a radio for $63. You get an anchor for 12 And that was the only time I'd ever seen an anchor as an option in a car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, you'd mentioned the propellers. And that's something else this sports that few other cars do. They've got a couple right back here, a couple little nylon props. 
Yeah, the, as, as you see, two props, and if you're familiar with boating, uh, most large boats, of course, to uh, back up a boat or turn a boat, you use the reversing of the, uh, of the gear shifts. This is not true here. How you turn this car boat. <laughs> <laughs> it is a car boat. <laughs> with, is with the front wheels. That's They're the, the rudder. rudder? They're the rudder. It's odd place for rudder. How's that work? Not very not good. Not very good. <laughs> but it does, it does work. Yep. Now, this is a, these, these were made between 61 and 68. Uh, I think 800 or so, most of them came to the U.S. And it was a West German built car, but it had a Triumph engine. Yes. Which was back here. Right. And it's the same locking device that we have the same which key. Which makes it seaworthy. Yeah. And we open it up. Okay, so that's a 70 cubic inch Triumph for about 1150 cc's, right? And you can see as original, it only had uh, 2,000 miles on, so it's, you know, it's original, which runs out great. And it's all, this is all watertight and, and it doesn't uh, and leak in? Or? Yeah, here's the little bilge pumps in case you get in trouble. <laughs> That's another thing you don't see in mini cars, yeah. I, I must say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that is great. Now, how, how does it go down the road? It goes down the road pretty good until you get to about 50 miles an hour and then the front end starts dancing around on you. <laughs> <laughs> so it works good around the, uh, you know, community or lake yeah. or whatever you want to do, going to the grocery store. I use it uh, up north at Harbor Springs and I do go to the golf course and uh, back to the marina and drive out on the dock to a regular boat with it. <laughs> well, it's got to create smiles wherever it, it goes. It does. If I go into the gas station, people stop and start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> when you drive into the water, they stop and start laughing. That's right. Well, and speaking of driving in the water, what do you, uh, what do you say we do? Let's do it. All right. <laughs> This is a new experience. Now we're using the front end in. Now okay. just went, we'll just do this slowly the first time. And uh, tell me when you feel it floating. I think we're floating. As Bob motored away, using the accelerator pedal to control the speed of the props and the steering wheel to turn the amphicar car by using the front wheels as rudders, I couldn't stop looking around to see if we had a leak. Thank goodness this amphicar car was watertight. There's a, the other end of this lake, there's another little round lake. It's kind of a narrows and it widens out again. We're still dry in here. We're still yeah. dry. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. So far, no leaks. I was surprised how well it performed in the water. And while we won't set any speed records, the amphicar really is seaworthy. <laughs> that is, as long as the seas are calm. Well, here we come to Roses. This is the first time I ever had my ice As we headed back to shore, I was unaware that Bob had arranged for a couple of drinks to be served to us beachside. Now this is what I call service. We're just going to do that first. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's lovely to be here. Happy you could join us. Well, thank hey, you. Bob. Perfect timing. Why, right, thank you. And, and of course, since in the interest of safe boating and driving, these are non-alcoholic. That's right. certainly. Yeah, absolutely. Bob, thanks for sharing one of the more unique cars I've ever seen. Well, this is a great experience for me. So <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. I say we go back out and do some fishing. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Well, we've come to the end of another show, and what a show it was. Our thanks to the Mopar Nationals and all the great Mopar owners. We had a fabulous weekend.